Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about QNT, XRP, XDC, and possibly a few other assets. So, sit back, relax. We're going to be talking about ISO 222 adoption as well. And we're going to be talking about the innovation with ISO 222 as well. If you guys are new to this channel or if you guys are you know, liking the daily crypto content, definitely hit that like button. Also subscribe and turn notifications on if you guys haven't already. And let's jump in. So obviously, listen, Bitcoin is making some waves. Ethereum is making some waves. So all of these other assets are making some waves. But there's two assets that are not. And people have been mentioning to me a lot lately that these two are actually kind of sitting stable. XDC, pretty much sitting stable at about nine and a half cents hasn't made you know any leeway in fact on the three month span we could see this massive downward trend since around august now where's our bottom support at well ultimately speaking our bottom support would most likely be around some point down here at around eight nine in terms of cents or nine cents exact or around eight and a half cents but pretty much the bottom figure here is pretty much seven cents being retested if we could get a retest of seven cents that would be absolutely ridiculous and i would be buying that dip all day long but i will say this xdc is extremely undervalued for what it is actually doing and we're going to be talking about that right in this video but also q and t i want to talk to you guys about q and t because the q and t has also been in a downward trend in fact i do think that this is officially bottomed out though i think that this has hit its bottom point at around 244 dollars back here or actually it hit, uh, hit even a lower point at about 238 dollars uh so that's pretty you know pretty interesting there um but overall this has been in a downward trend as well going back three months we do see it pretty much hitting that high back in uh september and then from there we pretty much just have been retesting you know some lows so you know these two assets are kind of in the same boat together they're not making any you know major gains or anything like that and they're not moving significantly just yet but they will very soon in my mind i do completely agree with the idea that a lot of these assets like qnt for an example are providing massive value um, behind their use cases for an example qnt is linked to 570 plus banks with sia chain and not only that but they are providing interoperability with a lot of these other assets that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis like xrp with the digital pound foundation so a lot of innovation, a lot of connections are happening behind the scenes. And I do want to show you guys ISO 222 in terms of the fednow.org website. Check this out. Technology Tower, financial services organizations in more than 70 countries currently use the ISO 222 standard, including the Clearinghouse RTP network, which has used the standard since the payment platform launched in 2017. Hmm. Pretty interesting, right? Additionally, the Federal Reserve's Fedwire Fund Service and the Clearinghouse Interbank Payment System, CHIPS, are planning to roll out the ISO 222 standard across their systems. Hmm. So obviously we know this is coming. And of course, when we're looking back on this, it connects perfectly to a lot of these ISO 222 um, assets like XRP, IOTA, ALGO, XLM, XDC, and so forth. I do want to show you guys some interesting things with XDC, but first we have to go through some other things which of course is the ISO adoption happening into a, a country near you. And, and check this out, right? Real-time payments using ISO 222 is introduced to provide an alternative consumer payment rail plus bulk. This has initially happened in uh, 2017 to 2020. Then we've seen the overlapping of figure two, which is high value payments moved to ISO 222 to provide a superior data rich RTGS system. Now, in terms of RTGS, right, we go back to QNT because they're focused in that area for interoperability as well. And I know that, you know, QNT isn't exactly labeled on the ISO 222 um, list, but it is making big names within interoperability. And we also see Swift cross border to simplify and streamline cross border payments as well by moving to ISO uh, 222. So, ISO 222 is going to provide immense value for a lot of these assets. In fact, when we're talking about ISO 222, we go back to XRP. We go back to June 10th, 2020, in fact, and we look at shaping the future of cross-border payments. This is essentially the future with a lot of these DLTs pretty much being you know, adopted in through ISO 222. We also see here, it is estimated that 87% of global financial transactions will be supported by the messaging system as well by 2023. 
this is pretty huge. And uh, XRP is going to be a leading name within this, but also so is XL, uh, XLM and XDC and so many others, right? Now, I also want to show you guys this real quick. XRP Army, XRP, XRP Community, BIS. With the introduction of CBDCs, we have the opportunity to build payment systems that are interoperable from day one. Now, XRP is not, you know, data interoperable. In fact, it is more so a digital bridge or a currency bridge, if you will. When we're talking about interoperability, it needs something like QNT to help it leverage or be leveraged with, you know, other inter interoperable assets. QNT provides that value, just so you guys know. It is the network of networks. Now, we also see here, in terms of XDC, Talia and JP Morgan, the future of supply chain finance. Okay, I've talked to you guys about the supply chain finance um, before in terms of XDC, and this is huge. All right, this is trillions of dollars. Experience the future of supply chain finance. The early payment program from JP Morgan and Talia is uniquely designed to support an entire supply chain, accelerating payments and optimizing working capital, all in with a single, agile, and innovative global payment solution. Of course, we do see here collaboration at its best, how our strategic trade finance market works. And then we also see here Talia. But look at that XDC. And there's many other huge names on here, just so you guys know like Finastra, which we've talked about in the past, but also Santander as, uh, as well. But Talia is the main one that sticks out because Talia and JP Morgan are the main focus point here because they are working in trade finance through, hmm, guess what? Accelerating payments, you know, working with an entire supply chain and optimizing working capital with all, you know, a nice little, you know, digitization of this major market. Now, we also see here, if you don't know what R3 is, you should, because check this out. Swiss Stock Exchange 6 will tokenize equity on R3 Quarters blockchain. R3 Quarters enterprise platform as the underlying blockchain for the digital asset trading settlement and custody service it's building. Now, if you guys didn't know, R3 Quarter is directly co uh, coordinated with, you know, XDC. It's actually a, a full-on connection with XDC. XDC essentially is R3 Corda at the end of the day. This is huge. Tokenizing equity is a massive use case. Now, this goes all the way back to 2019, I mind you. When we're talking about XDC, we are so early in the game for XDC that not a lot of people actually realize how early we actually are. And again, when we're talking about supply chain, this is huge. I've discussed this in a video on XDC in the past, and this is a direct you know, connection with it. XDC is the only asset within the space that actually could provide trade finance disruption through a major, you know, digitization of this market. Just so you guys know. Now we also see here crypto, a billion users by 2024, an entire asset class going 100x, the biggest opportunity of a lifetime. Good luck buying the 2023 bottom. Listen closely to what Rob Paul is saying here. So this is the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded human history. So it's growing at 113% a year, which is twice the speed the internet was when it had 150 million users. You extrapolate that out, you get to a billion people by 2024. If you look at it in terms of market cap, it's about 20, uh, 2 trillion today, a bit over that. Most other assets are around 200 trillion. So equities, bonds, real estate, so if this is the asset class that we think it is, and it's growing at this rate, then 200 trillion is a reasonable estimate by the end of the decade. So that's an entire asset class market cap going up a hundredfold. We've seen that in a stock before. We've seen that in a few things, never an entire asset class. So it's the biggest opportunity I've ever, ever seen. So this is literally a 100x opportunity in front of our faces. And crypto has always grown, grown and been adopted in year over year. But now it is growing and being adopted at such a massive rate. And we have been seeing it through ISO 222 alone in terms of massive innovative technology. Now, I also want to show you guys a few things here. And this is Q&T, right? I've always discussed this. But soon, every blockchain will be connected to every blockchain and network in the world. Interoperability changes everything. And QNT, or Quant Networks, is the leading name in the game for interoperability. Understand what QNT actually is providing you, and you would understand that $260 is still a steal in terms of price. Now, we also see here SDX with Project Helvetica plus BIS is the digital twin of six, the official SWIFT stock exchange, which also provides the central bank money rails. 
UNT does the interoperability for SDX, plus cross-border CBDC are solved as well, forwarded by the CEO. Now, this goes back to what I just read in terms of XDC, or right here, sorry. Swiss Stock Exchange uh, 6 will tokenize equity on R3 quarters blockchain. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is the connection here? Well, this will also need interoperability. So, with QNT working with 6 or, you know, SDX as well, this is huge. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be working with 6 at all, but they are working with SDX. And check this out, right? Augustin Karstens outlines the work on the BIS Innovation Hub Swiss Center at the event uh, for Swiss Contonial Banks. Now, check this out again. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, pretty sure R3 Corda was the chosen DLT system for SDX. Essentially, it wasn't, um, but it doesn't matter even if it is because it, they still need something like QNT that does provide the interoperability aspect. And check it out, right? Project uh, Jura, or Jura, I believe. While Project Helvetia, or Helvetia, yeah, because this was Helvetica, so I'm, I'm sub I guess this was a spelling mistake. As a domestic focus, Project Uria has a cross-border perspective. It is a public-private collaboration involving the Bank of France, the Swiss National Bank, the BIS Innovation Hub, and a private sector consortium. It explores cross-border and cross-currency settlement of tokenized financial instruments and wholesale CBDCs. In the experiment, a tokenized commercial payment or paper uh, settles against a Euro wholesale CBDC via delivery versus payment DVP and Euro wholesale CBDC is exchanged against a Swift franc wholesale CBDC via payment versus payment PVP. The experiment involves transactions between banks domiciled in France and in Switzerland Project Uria. Uh, adds a cross-border dimension to the project Helvetia and is expected to be completed by the end of the year. This is pretty huge. Also, when we're talking about this and a lot of people are saying, well, dude, where's the price movement? We are not in a utility-driven market just yet. But just imagine how huge something like QNT will be at scale in an interop in a utility market with interoperability at the key focus point for QNT. But also... We look back at ISO 222, and XRP will still need something that makes it interoperable. In fact, that is why when we look at the Digital Pound Foundation and that innovation that happened, QNT and XRP are the leading names that really kind of stuck out to me. Of course, there's Energy um, Web Token or ETN, I believe, uh, something like that. Yeah, I think it was ETN Exact, which was um, Electronium. That's what it was. Uh, so this this actually also stood out to me in terms of its value. Um, all time chart, you know, this has a ton of potential as well, you know, at 20 cents, look at where we are now. So this has a lot of potential as well. Definitely look into ETN because ETN is also a huge name in the game with, you know, Q and T as well as XRP. So definitely look into this asset as well. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are, I'm just with Nick. Peace out, guys.